so I had heard that there was a petition and I had received some screenshots from social media. And then I received an email from Catherine Poe, which had a, provided a link to the petition for me to check out when it was early on. I think we were 700 posts or something like that, or signatures, on electronic signatures. My initial purpose behind the petition was kind of to organize people's anger. Uh, I, since being a first year student here, uh, I've known that there have been housing issues. It's just kind of something that everyone lives with and constantly talks about. No one ever actually was organizing the anger though. We were all just venting about it. Um, and so I kind of decided to organize everyone's passion into one document that actually like made sense and could be acted upon. The original demands in the petition um, had a lot to do with the housing pricing. There were other concerns, so quality of living, um, you know, just simple like heat issues. It was primarily focused on changing the housing prices or at least bringing some recognition to the fact that students felt that way. Also, you know, the university was charging us fairly significant amount for those things. I don't know that administration fully realized how angry students were until the petition started. You know, I have fairly significant health issues. I have the whole time that I've been at the university. Not having hot water for a month and a half caused me serious problems. I was miserable. Yeah, raising the question of changing uh, the fees, lowering the fees is, is reasonable. I think that uh, any request is reasonable. Whether or not we can actually institute it is an issue of where we are in the budget cycle and where we are in the approval cycle with our board of trustees. Who That was at the point where it was difficult because we had published those rates and those rates had been decided. But it's not unreasonable. Requests are never unreasonable. So the petition blew up a lot faster than I thought it was going to. I like wrote it, did some things, collected some stories, and I woke up the next morning and it had like 500 signatures. And I was like, oh, like this is going to be like a thing. I'm a very direct person. <laughs> uh, so I was like, okay, like I'm just going to like go to Beth Paul with this. I think that often people underestimate the... Uh, the ability to just like explain yourself <laughs> because if you you know like if you get to a person before they hear through it secondhand that's a lot better of an impression and when the petition came in i had a great conversation with Catherine and told her i appreciated it which is true that she you know was helping get students voice out uh, i told her and it's exactly what i did that i would take the concerns to uh, the VPs, the other vice presidents of the institution, and uh, had a meeting with vice presidents. Must have been I don't know, three or four days, maybe, after I met with Catherine. And we looked at what we were able to do, what we weren't able to do, and then uh, and had a conversation more about it over the weekend electronically, the VPs, and was able to, that following week then, we were able to make the change in, in pulling back a bit the price increase for the commons. People know when you raise their prices. People know the kind of living conditions they're living in. It's important to people, and I don't think that they realized that before this. So I think that, if anything, it's a really good place to be in accountability because they're finally realizing that, oh, people are paying attention to us. What tripped us up this time uh, is the, the lack of timely communication to the students from the administration. Things like petitions are great because it brings things to light, but they're not as effective as using some of the already existing channels. So finding ways to inform students about offices they can go to, people they can talk to. So I think getting feedback from students, really uh, appreciating what the price sensitivity is to students and for students is key, first and foremost. But to do that, you have to take a look at data and also talk to human beings. You have to talk to students. And then uh, from there, communicate out any changes that you're going to make early enough that students can make responsible choices, reasonable choices for, for their housing.
we do go to a university that they do genuinely care. Like, I, I don't think, I think that it is a disservice to administrative individuals to say that they don't care about their jobs and they don't care about students. I just think that they're a little bit disconnected sometimes. Uh, and sometimes in life, you got to love tap people. In my experience, capital has fixed quite a few problems that I've had. There are a lot of universities where that would not have worked and they would have just said no. And I think that that makes our university a very special place.